everybody. Welcome for another edition of In the Lead Off the Record. I am Kyle Cheslock, and Chase Shields will be joining us here shortly. I uh, apologize for the delay that was on me, but uh, nevertheless, you're going to get our uh, unsolicited feedback on our topic today. So, uh, before we jump into that topic, uh, feel free to uh, share this with anybody that you guys feel like would uh, uh, help or be relevant for. We love hearing from you too, so feel free to chat in to us on Facebook here. Uh, otherwise, we're also on Instagram, Twitter, uh, all the social medias, uh, all at the lead tool. Pretty easy uh, for you podcast listeners out there, SoundCloud, iTunes, the whole nine. Feel free to give us a listen on your way to work or on the way home. There's a lot of good content out there for you today. And uh, without further ado, let's jump into our topic, which is pretty relevant for uh, a, a lot of people. And something that we talk about a lot is uh, a lot of owners spend too much time in their business and not enough time on their business. And what we're going to talk about today is how to hire uh, the right people to empower your business for growth, which is, uh, uh, you know, like I said, something that I think a lot of companies struggle with. They don't know when to hire, who to hire, and they just, uh, you know, kind of have that progression if you're employing. A lot of times you start as an installer, and then you grow into your own business, and you're used to doing everything on your own, and you don't really know how to surround yourself with people that allows you guys to scale uh, vertically instead of horizontally. So, um, you know, that's kind of, uh, uh, you know, where we're at when it comes down to, uh, whatever business, whatever line of business you're in. Um, you gotta have good people in place if you really want to grow your business. Yeah. And I think the other thing too, is like, it just runs far and wide with, um, when you build a business and you start out operating, um, it's hard to like pull yourself out of that. And <clears throat> the job of the president, CEO, whatever you want to call it, owner, is really to ensure the long-term viability of the business. And it's really hard to do that when you're doing things like laying out delivery routes um, and stuff like that. Because um, the idea, of course, is to bring in people and, and like Warren Buffett used to say, or says, I think it's in the Berkshire Hathaway Owner's Manual, uh, we delegate to the point of abdication which some big words, but yeah, basically- Yeah, that's, that's a $2 word right there. Yeah, basically means- What does that mean for the crowd? Basically <laughs> means that um, what Berkshire does is they actually bring people in um, and give them responsibilities to the point where they're not overseeing their management on a regular basis. So it's bringing in talented people and letting them do their jobs rather than micromanaging them. It's the opposite of micromanagement. Yeah, that's the, the easiest way to look at it. It's bringing in talent and letting them do what they do. Um, so I think that uh, I think like there's a lot to be said for that. I think it's a brilliant strategy because um, you want to run your business. You don't want your business to run you. So so if you're feeling like that, if you're feeling like you're spending a ton of time in your business and you know you're getting to work at six a.m. and you're not leaving till eight p.m. at night. Whatever it may be, this is you know you definitely want to pay uh, more attention to what we're talking about here because this is for you. Yeah, and and you know again, it's hard a lot of times for people to like let go of the reins, but really like you're not you're letting go of like the day to day kind of like BS and busy words. Yeah, right? and the operations piece, like yeah. you're not operating it day to day. I mean, you are, but you're just at a higher level because you're mm -hmm. you're looking, you're concentrating on okay, I've been in business for twenty years what I need to do to be a business for another 20 years. So like the trucking example is, is great. Um, just because, you know, like you were, we were just talking about this not long ago and you were telling me about someone you met at one of the trade shows, like the owner was telling a group of their like fellow members, they're all members of maybe a buying group. Mm -hmm. And the guy was talking about how he's got this method of laying out all of his van deliveries. Yeah. And it's like using a big wall map and post-its. He's got, yeah, so you know, like you got a wall in your room and it's got a, like, a, I don't wanna say spreadsheet, but it's a big old map. And he lays out, you know, his delivery schedule on that map. And, you know, for, for, for scale, that's just not viable. Uh, well, know, same thing when you go into calendaring out and scheduling appointments. As, I mean, we'll go into the list here. Yeah, but. as an owner, there's just like such low ROI yeah. on the owner scheduling the deliveries. It's like a great example. When Dan was running our yard, which is our yards are still running, 
Um, not ours anymore, but still running. How big was it? Um, I mean, we had so we had a manufacturing facility for custom millwork. We had distribution yards, um, and then we had or we had a distribution yard, and then we had um, a dry kiln facility with a couple kilns, dehumidifiers. So like, not a small operation. No, pretty complex operation. Um, How many people did you have there? We had, I think, like 30, 35. Yeah, so um, it definitely size. Yeah, it business. was a, it was a good size. Like like we wouldn't have been like a pro. Well, we weren't a retail dealer. We were a distributor. But I mean, it was it was over ten million a year. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it was like it was a good size good operation. Good size operation. Um. So you know, like Dan, for example, like wasn't setting up his trucking. Like we were running our own fleet. We had tractor trailers. We had straight truck. We had pickup. Um, Hull Nine Yards, uh, we had a, a trucking or logistics manager, whatever you want to call it, who would work with our outside yard manager who went, ran the outside operation, um, get the production schedule set up so we knew you know what orders we had to pull, we knew what had to go through the planer, we knew what mill work was getting run through the molder. Um, and we knew, you know, what rough lumber we had to pull out and sort and get ready to go on a truck. And then the trucking manager would coordinate the production with whoever needed, the, the customers who needed deliveries. Who ever saw the sales reps? So um, that actually, the reps actually reported directly to the owners. They okay. reported to Dan. Because um, okay. we had a small sales staff. Sure. You know, we had, um, we had six people. Okay. Um, so you guys like had six, this. We had outside six outside reps. Six we outside had like reps. one or two inside guys. Okay. So a lot of people can probably relate to that. So you had these different departments, and you had you know a manager in place overseeing the operations of each. Yeah. What did that allow Dan to scale the company from you know let's say you know back in the day to where it was when you left? Um, they scaled it up like over probably I think like percentage wise is what I know the best. I think it was like a I want to say it was like over. 12 or 1500 percent over his tenure they had one year where they lost money only um, one year out of and that was over what that was years? he yeah he was I think he came in as a VP in like the early 70s okay um, and then left in 10 so okay. I think and I think the year that, that we I think the year we actually had a loss was like in the middle of the um, recession there's and several recessions like, yeah, in yeah. that span and yeah and by the way like we, at that point, like, no debt. <laughs> um, so no so, debt. Like, 30 to 35 years like, running yeah, this operation. Paying, like, our trucks pay cash, our equipment. Like, so it was like, Profitable so this operation. was like, yeah, this was a very strong, well-run, um, still running operation. Uh, and, and the biggest thing, you know, like, you get in, so what's comparable, I think, in a lot of cases for, for definitely the people who are listening in, in wholesale and distribution, any uh, lumber yards, like, millwork operation, um, when you get the ops side kind of like off your plate when you're not outside like running around putting together like production lists yeah. or figuring out what inventory you got to pull or what you got to go where your trucks are like going, for, what's on the trucks yeah for retailers who have to go to like a distributor like in an Ohio Valley flooring here yeah. um, who services yards and flooring dealers yeah. um, you know you're not worried about like if you got to go pick something up at 6 a.m. like you have something in place um, and you grow into that, right? Like, this wasn't something where, like, they just started out and, like, went out on a binge, like, hiring people to fill these roles. This is something, like, you scale. Like, as, first, as, as you yeah. started getting more business like, and you felt like your hair was on fire. Yeah, so we, like, again, using the, the trucking and deliveries, because I know everyone who's listening to this has to do some sort of delivery, whether you're a flooring installer taking a van or you're a lumber dealer sending, you know, a box truck or your distributor sending a tractor trailer. We got our first truck, I think, in, um, well, hang on, let me ask. I think that was Dan. Hey, what year did you buy the first truck? What year was it? We're, we're on, so you don't have to think. 76. Too 76. 76. Okay, okay, so we bought it, and that was a straight truck, and we brought, bought the first semi in the late 80s, right? So it you was still proportional. Yeah, yeah. Growth. So so and for you know initially like before before Dan moved up into management, he was like driving a truck. So he was creating lumber, 
he was driving. So this is a family business, so it's not you know quite the yeah. same. Like it was, it was a platform versus like starting out. So for those of you starting out, like you're gonna wind up doing every job anyway. Mm -hmm. But like, you but you'll know, reach a point of yeah, growth. You buy, yeah. Where it was like, okay, this truck is making us money. Yeah, we're gonna get another one, and then it becomes like you can't be when you're in a management role. You know, in your job is like your 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 job is sales. Your job is growth. You can't be doing things like setting up your trucks, your routes, like every day. You bring, so you bring someone in, and particularly I think we brought someone in, I think when we got that first tractor trailer. Yeah, um, so yeah, so 82. So there you go, so over, that was that's nine years before like going from like a straight truck to getting to a tractor trailer in addition to the straight truck, yeah. tr straight trucks, plural I think. So like it's a scale thing, and then you start hiring people to come in and fill those operational roles, so that you can actually focus on the next thing, right? But so you gotta let them actually do it. Yeah, you can't you be can't, standing over their shoulder. Yeah, you can't be micromanaging them. Like if you're, you know, you gotta let your, you gotta let your sales. It's like sales. Like you gotta let your salespeople sell. You can't be like, can I say this? Can I price this? Like. Tell them where they can go and let them loose. Or saying this is how I would do it. So yeah, so when you're looking for when you're looking to like you want your business to run without you having to be there, right? Like if the business is dependent on you, and and let me explain why this is super relevant to your bank account because at some point there's going to have to be a succession plan, whether that involves going um, going and selling the business perhaps, or whether it's the next generation taking over, mm -hmm. but like if that business can't run itself, it's got no value to a potential acquirer because you're the business, if they view you as the business, that's a that's a discount on the valuation of business. Um, anyone who's in-, in and, and Think in, about it this way, if something were to happen to you, what would happen to you? Yeah, if, if you get hit by like, um, like our CTO always says, you know, what happens to the product if you get hit by a truck? Like that's the, that's, and that's actually kind of the running joke in open source software on big open source projects. That's why they want more contributors because if there's like one main contributor and they get hit by a truck, the project's dead. And, and it sounds so, funny, but shit actually happens. No, it's, it's true. So like same thing if you have a next generation coming in, if you haven't set that business up to kind of like auto operate and they don't understand it, like it's gonna be a lot harder for them if the business is solely reliant on you and then you're just throwing them the keys and they don't understand how to make everything else work. Um, so, you know, you grow into it. It's not like you just, you drop, I mean, hell, I think when, when my dad came in, I know they were doing under a million bucks a year. Yeah. Like, so they grew it from that, like to what it was. And so I think that, you know, it's one of these things like we're not advocating go out and hire a bunch of people, but just as you grow, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get yourself out of like the bullshit roles. Yeah. Like your value changes over time as you go from a half a million to a million, a million to two million. Your value changes from uh, uh, needing to do everything and be everything to everybody in the business because you have to in the early days. Yeah. But when you scale to that, your value changes. To, to, to other places, your value is not in the operation. Yeah, and you got to realize like you're not you're not scale, scalable. And if you are a hell of an operator, you know you may have some value. You will always have value in operations, but it's more of like macro managing versus micro managing. You want to you want to hire people that you can empower it, it, by training and then giving them the freedom to execute. Um, which is where there's like a, a in my opinion like a huge amount of value. Like yeah. Why would why would we hire you? Like because when we were getting off the ground, I was doing all the sales. There's no value in, in me doing all the sales because I can't you know I, I I can't have any input into the product then, and I there's so many other things that I have to be doing. Now that also doesn't mean though that you're just oblivious to everything that's going on. This is no, where no, 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 no. systems processes things that yeah. nature come into play. Right, and there's all kinds of tools and and, and, and things exactly. out there for you to do no, this. But it's, it's exactly it's like so going back to trucking, yep. logistics and routing programs, yep. sales, CRM systems. One of the yep. best part of CRMs is like I could be in literally Timbuktu, and if I had an internet connection, I could. You're you are heading out to Ford this week or yeah, tomorrow, right? I would know what what was going on here. Um, on. Yeah, and 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 so I mean, you know, there's there's no reason that you have to like be out of the business. You should be visible, be in the business. Not advocating that, just saying like, in order for the business to really thrive, it you, when as you're as you're growing, like you want to hire people 
They can um, take things off of your plate, lower ROI things. Whether um, that's an additional inside sales rep for your flooring store or a marketing manager for your yard or yeah, whatever exactly. it may be that's to it. either drive business in or help uh, service the business that you have to right because no matter what like the owner is always going to be the most valuable person oh, and like some, doubt. there are some owners who literally bring the most value to their businesses by like just like literally being in the same place yeah place. so like not even doing anything like other being than public. other than like yeah going visiting customers doing stuff like that because that makes people visiting feel good. jobs there are other there are other owners who like they having the strategic vision for their business of knowing where like a product or a process has to go and then putting people in place to, to, to build that. That's common in technology. Talking to your um, people from an objective view when you're not actually in the business so you can see where your pain points are yeah, and you can go and, about fixing them. Well, Things like that that you just don't have time to think about when you're in your business, you don't see that. Stuff. Well, and the other thing, the other thing that a lot of that stuff, like going back to your question, what did it allow Dan to do by having those people, like this is such a relevant example, especially now that I, I think more about it. So, you know, we had someone running the yard, so they were pulling, they knew, you know, what to pull and where, like where to get the units out and the products that were going into production um, for, you know, all of our sales orders. And then we had someone lining up the trucking, both things like he was doing at one point. Um, you know, so well, actually a lot of what he did was in the late 90s, he started investing pretty heavily in technology. So like in 1999, we got our first um, uh, end tally computer, handheld end tally computer. So for those of you who aren't familiar with tallying, um, this kind of makes me chuckle every time I hear someone like talk about it being complicated to inventory roll goods because roll goods are uh, yeah. roll goods are such a piece of cake compared to inventory and hardwood. Um, yeah, just stay tuned for this. <laughs> so, this is good. so basically, when you inventory rough lumber, um, <coughs> we hardwood uh, hardwood comes usually in random width and random length. So you have like packages of a product. You could have uh, uh, one inch thick, which we would call four quarter poplar. Um, all the same thickness, but in varying widths and lengths. Um, so minimum width for most grades was six inches. And then, you, you know, there would be length packages, but they would be, you know, six to eight foot. Um, you could have an eight to 12, you could have a 12 to 16. So all over so, the place. So we, yeah, so we calculated the volume. We went by volume, not, um, not area. So we would have to take account of the width and length width and inches, length and feet of each board in a unit. And then that would give us the board footage, which was the quantity. So you used to do that with like a piece of paper and a little tally book and, and you would like literally like tally, just like, like if I could put the camera on the whiteboard, like tally, like one, yeah. two, three, four, five, one, you know, like that. And, and that's, how, that's count. how you would keep count. So in the late nineties, um, company called forestry systems, came out with um, handheld computer tallies so we could computerize all of that and then we could print it off so we had you know a physical inventory that was in our AS400 and then we would have like print offs and we had like bins of our print offs so we could go in the back where the production room was and like we could pull out you know here are all our, the tallies for our units of four quarter poplar we'd look for an inventory tag. So Dan was able to do stuff like that. Our production gains, I mean, I could ask him, but like the amount of money that saved us as we moved more and more towards computerization and then he put in a CRM, like, and as, as we became more computerized, I mean, our, our accuracy between what we would physically, we would do physical inventory once a year, our accuracy between the computer and what we physically had on the yard was um, less than 1%. Less than one. So, and, and contrast that with, um, you know, we had someone in here from a, 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 actually a larger operation the other day, a friend of ours, um, won't name who it was, but in, a, in the exact same business that we were in, um, and their variance was way over that. Like, it was way, when, when, when they were explaining how they were doing inventory, it was just like, damn, like the yeah. amount of money that you that you can like make or lose. And if you're overstating your inventory, you're paying taxes on that. So like what, what it allowed Dan to do was, was stuff like that was pursue technology. Like when you put the CRM in, you know, his sales reps just have to call in 
and like get information from him or mm -hmm. you know give them the download on what they did all day because the outsider has to call in and then when they did that dan's line was like it eliminated six phone calls a day for him six phones so calls. he didn't have to be on the phone listening to everything yeah. which doesn't give you a record of everything that's the other thing about you know some of these systems that can can plug you in when you empower your people with them they can keep you more tuned into your business than you would be otherwise. So he was able to pursue stuff like that, which set the business up. Business is uh, 100 and 126 years old this year. So that's the type of stuff that set it up for the next 126 years. Well, that also allowed him that, you know, obviously he hired the right people at the right time, bought the right uh, equipment at the right time when he was scaling up. But to your point, invested in technology at the right time too that allowed him not necessarily to add, you know, two, three, four, five more bodies when the reality is he bought one system where it enabled one guy to do the work of yeah, two or three more Yeah, it's more, way more efficient. And, and, you know, the other thing, too, is, like, by getting out of kind of, like, the, um, the weeds, so to speak, you're able to focus on, like, your vendor relationships, yep. your big client relationships, cultivating new client relationships. Like, if you... If you are um, like some, I mean, we have some incredible retail at LBM yards here in Cincinnati, and I know the owners of um, the two biggest, and um, they're, I mean, they're super, super sharp, and they, they absolutely are not like down in the weeds. They're out, you know, talking to new builders. Mm -hmm. um, they're dealing with their vendors. They would be dealing with us, and because you know, we we served as an outsource to almost all of our retail business for stuff like, you know, someone would say, oh, we need S4S blanks, you know, yeah. oh yeah, we can get that, they call us, we run, you know, a load of poplar through our molder and sand it on four sides, that's what S4S is, for those of you who don't know, um, and you know, wham, there you go, like, so you focus on, like, actually growing growth activity, the, yeah, you focus on, yeah, healthy business activity, now, whether that's maintaining existing relationships, which for a lot of you it may be, yeah, maybe um, then you know, but the cherry on top. Yeah, you have more time for yeah. the existing relationships. Yeah. Well, you um, also have more time to ask more questions about those existing relationships of different uh, jobs, different items, different lines of business that you guys can then sell into them that you're not currently selling into. Right, and and so I guess you know my challenge for everybody would be kind of like think about the three lowest ROI things you're doing. You know, not counting the owners who are doing things like cleaning the bathroom and stuff like that. I recognize every once in a while you got to take out the trash. I do that all the time. I get it, but you know what are you doing today that you can either automate via technology, you know, enslave technology if you can, yeah. or you know you've got enough work where you can legitimately hire someone and free up 30, 40, 50% of your time and go focus on, you know, something else that's going to uh, provide more value to the business. When I say to the business, like, I mean to your people, like to you, to your customers, like, because that's, that's what this is all about. When you, when you start bringing in people and you start leveraging different technologies, you're actually going to see material growth in your business. And that's kind of what this all boils and, and again, you know, for the people who are going to say, well, we don't want to grow. We have enough going on right now because I get like we're top of the market right now. I understand. But like this is still. It's Can you still, ever have enough business? It's still, I mean, you know, I don't think so, but I'm sure. That, well, that you're tapped. And this is kind of the point for those people, too. Like you're tapped out. You're doing a lot yeah, of business. If you're, if you're, that's when you hire. If, if your answer to everything is I'm so busy or I'm busy or whatever, which is so cliche now because no one is that busy. Um, you need to hire. Like you need to hire people. Like you need to hire someone to run your logistics. You need to hire someone who can manage like pulling your orders. You need to hire someone who's a dedicated buyer. Um, if your answer is you're too busy, that's going to show to your customers too. They're not dumb. Yeah, They'll eventually, like, they're not if, getting if, service. Something yeah. falls through the cracks. It's very bad. It's going and, to happen. And, and look, like they're a Google search away now from a new supplier. Remember that too. Yeah. That's the scary thing. I mean, it's you know and. Um, and, and, you know, it's a scary thing, but it's also the truth. You well, know? and there's these different things that just weren't there even five years ago, and, ten and years ago. Suppliers are looking to grow too, right? Like, I mean, we had what hell one of the mills we were doing two million dollars a year with um, decided to start. You know, they, everyone's looking to grow. They decided to start um, selling to one of our customers, so we freaking cut them off. You know, yeah. I mean, and like. 
in a good market, everyone's going to be looking to grow. There, you've got in particularly like in the this is it's it's a little bit harder to do with with rough lumber because like it's a product of nature. Everything's different. Um, it's a much more capital intense like business. Mm-hmm. Um, but like pre manufactured goods, like commodity goods, I'm talking like cabinet doors. Um, hardware items, flooring for sure, like those, those, yeah, those, the yeah, those suppliers are all going to look to go direct yeah. um, because of the rise of non non store retail. That's a threat to them, just like it's a threat to you. Um, so they need to uh, up their game too. So the more you can enable your business, the more you can enable yourself. The more you're going to enable your business. Yep, I think that's really it. Yep, and I think that's a good place to leave it. Yeah, we'll leave it there. So hit us up with any questions. Let us know. Yep, DM us. We're always happy to answer anything. If you have an idea for a topic or or would like to get some uh, input from us, always shoot us a DM. Yeah, or if if there's something that's driving you nuts in your business, for uh, sure. Love to hear about it. We'll try to take a step. We can reverse engineer most things. Um, So, like, whether it's uh, how to how to run physical inventory? How to you know when like what's mm-hmm. that process? Whatever it may be issues you know, we, you're having in that process. Yeah. So um, yeah, we spent a hell of a long time doing all that stuff. Yeah. So For operations, sales, uh, technology implementation, you name it, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, tech, equipment, trucking. You know, whole nine yards. Inventory. Uh, yeah. Let us know. And, Love to hear uh, from you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys.